Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Spanish Slang, a podcast where we try to bridge the gap between the Spanish and Singaporean companies and encourage economic relations between them. Today we wanted to focus on one of the main virtues of Spain and also Southeast Asia, travel and tourism. This is why we welcome today Lucas Villalanga, which is a partner program manager at Agoda, which is an online travel agency specified in Southeast Asia. So, hello Lucas and welcome to Spanish Link. Hello Clara, thank you very much for having me here. So, in this first part of the interview, we're going to focus on the travel sector in Singapore. Mm -hmm. So, now Southeast Asia and specifically uh, Singapore is being really popular among mm -hmm. travelers all around the world. Can you explain and give us an overview of your work in Pagoda? In Agoda, sorry. Uh, sure. Um, so let me give you first a little bit of context. Mm -hmm. um, Agora as an, uh, it's an online travel agency. And um, what it does, it's fundamentally uh, puts together um, travelers on the one side and with places to stay. Mm -hmm. We're talking hotels, homes, etc. And we do that 24 seven and globally. Now, the ways we increase, uh, we give exposure to each other are fundamentally, there are many ways, but fundamentally it's in any OTA, it's uh, three. Um, the first one is on their own website, right? When somebody searches for uh, Singapore, let's say, since we're here, um, then you have a bunch of listed uh, hotels that come. The algorithm lists these hotels uh, depending on what it thinks it, uh, the probability of booking will be higher mm -hmm. for, that, for each uh, person. Uh, basically, fundamental, what it does is matching um, the interests of, of that person. So that's the first thing. Um, the second way we do this is, um, I know TAs generally do this, is by investing on pay-per-click ads, like the ones you may find on Instagram, and meta search engines, like you find on Kayak or Skyscanner in the case of flights. By doing this, uh, or by investing on behalf of hotels in this section, you reach to a bunch of travelers that may not be users of OTAs directly. And uh, the third major way we um, increase this exposure for hotels is through our affiliate networks, which or who they uh, sometimes offer travel deals to their own clientele. Therefore, reaching out to uh, these customers or potential guests that will not use, that may not be users of any of the prior um, let's say channels. Now, with this in mind, um, I basically drive um, the marketing exposure or I basically drive the programs or tools um, that push marketing exposure for hotels. Wow, yeah. so thank you Lucas because you gave us an, an overview of what is happening right now mm -hmm. when it comes to travel uh, and travel destinations, but it's so different from the one we're used to, or our parents and grandparents, of course, yeah. are used to, <laughs> which is directly to the hotel or through tra travel agencies that exist in the physical world, we can say. Yeah. So these new online travel agencies, in which way have they, they shaped the sector? So what has been the, the main difference between now and in which way they have been changing it? Yes. So. This is very interesting and it's this very well described in the Journal of Travel, Tourism and Marketing in 2019 in an article that came out. And what it fundamentally says, well, let's start basically um, o OTA or online travel agency. It's an online um, marketplace that uh, enables travelers to search, book um, and compare um, everything all the way from flights, hotels, car rentals, um, etc. Now with this, um, these OTAs, uh, they came out in the 90s in the United States and since then they have uh, rapidly gained a lot of market share by developing uh, very well their IT infrastructure as well as their business models. A bit later in the picture, now the 2000s, 2010s, um, the, the whole online uh, e-commerce um, just came to a boom and fundamentally changed the way people um, search and buy products online. How OT is coming to the picture is basically this, uh, this system enabled hotels, uh, or sorry, enabled travelers to gain access to um, all the 
prices and uh, rates and uh, distribution strategies of hotels online yeah. uh, with the sector. Uh, and the way OT is coming to the picture is by having all these pricing and distribution strategies online on OTAs 24 seven, um, the hotel sector or any place to stay starts to become heavily dependent on OTAs, right? But on the one, that's on the one hand. On the other, because of this, they start to be slightly uh, more, let's say, uh, heavily, uh, they, they have less bargaining power mm -hmm. in terms of uh, the fees that OTAs charge. Okay, okay. This consequentially uh, resulted in hotels developing their own websites uh, further to really have that um, more competitive power against. But at the same time, um, working with OTAs, as they are one of their major suppliers in Singapore, uh, on average, hotels, OTAs represent 20 to 30 percent of um, the, whole, the average hotel's business that comes in. Yeah. COVID further, and especially after COVID, this further improved, improved for us from the OTA, <laughs> OTA's point of view. It's increased because it's really pushed um, the the e-commerce mm -hmm. part of things. So people and travelers are a lot more used to using the apps, using their phones to travel, therefore giving more weight to OTAs. Yes, so we have seen an increase in, in, in the OTAs power that is kind of being less for the hotels and also an increase of information for the travelers. Mm. So anyone, we can have in a click all this information, all this kind of prices and we can compare. So in a mm -hmm. way, e-commerce and OTAs have helped consumers gain information and gain the power to choose yeah. right from different um, options and what are the roles of organizations and companies like yourself in shaping our travel habits? So OTAs like any other uh, online marketplace um, has really uh, influenced the, um, how, how travelers mm -hmm. uh, actually do or buy as we mentioned earlier okay. um, in, uh, through e-commerce. Um, and the same happens uh, on OTAs with travelers and the travel sector. It's, OTAs have influenced fundamentally in uh, three main ways. Uh, that is, uh, these are giving breadth of choice, um, giving um, access to deals, um, enabling uh, or, or increasing the ease of use and becoming uh, very convenient. Mm -hmm. Now, if we look at the breadth of choice, um, OTAs have uh, brought to a wide range of consumers at different price points where travelers um, can where travelers can either really look for something very specific all the way to just browsing for experiences. Mm -hmm. If we jump to the second part, it's it's very OTs are very, very common um, with uh, deal seekers. Um, by filtering, they can really um, drop down or, or follow their own preferences. Um, and thus resulting in a great time-saving uh, time saving tool when researching travel. Mm -hmm. um, if we go into ease of use, uh, compared to what we mentioning before, compared to the traditional um, experience or their tradition, more traditional counterparts, mm -hmm. um, OTAs are a lot easier uh, to use and to book um, in that sense. Um, and finally, in terms of convenience, um, many OTAs, uh, especially also uh, Agoda, we're uh, recently developing this, this concept of the uh, single trip, um, basically in, in a single platform, being able not only to book uh, your hotel or your flight, but also book alternative services. If you're booking your hotel, why not book your car? You're already here, you mm -hmm. can book your car, you can book your flight, why not an experience? This way it's very convenient, you don't have to be jumping from one to the other. Exactly, yes. So again, a lot of information for us, a lot of breadth of choice that that is amazing for our generation but also for the our parents yeah. as well that are increasingly using these platforms so now we have well we have the typical destinations that we can say that everyone knows but i'm sure that our companies like yourself and having this kind of um kind of wide varieties to choose from in terms of destinations mm -hmm. and also that we now we travel more so how can companies like yourself uh, raise awareness of kind of these destinations which are not so familiar or were not really familiar five years ago and mm -hmm. now they're increasing their popular popularity okay so up until now we've been seeing how how um 
OTAs and benefit uh, travelers, right? Mm -hmm. But the same, the same happens uh, on the other side of the equation. You have uh, now maybe smaller hotels on, on uh, more hidden destinations um, that thanks to OTAs, they have full access 24 seven to a global supply of travelers mm -hmm. uh, online. Um, there's also on top of this general concept of how the OTA works, um, there, there are certain initiatives. Um, I know, I mean, many OTAs have their own initiatives. I know, since I work in Agoda, um, in Agoda during COVID, for example, trying to promote, uh, we came up with um, an initiative called Go Local to uh, promote domestic travel in, in a period where it was uh, more difficult to get there, uh, to have it, um, whereby consumers, uh, we're using creative uh, marketing materials. We inspired travelers to rediscover their own cultures, as well as discover those hidden gems within their own, the places they, uh, they used to stay, whether it's cities or countries. Mm -hmm. That's so interesting because I feel that there's a win-win situation for everyone. So OTAs, of course, gain <laughs> at customers, but as well as hotels and maybe smaller hotels and smaller destinations that maybe not so popular some years ago. And also, of course, customers like ourselves that we travel and we enjoy these experiences yeah. and finally just to conclude and to give an overview of the future of the sector how can companies like yourself deal with travel massification that we're seeing mm. nowadays and how do you envision the the future of the sector yeah so this is basically the other side of the coin right on the one hand uh, travelers have really promoted um, let's say hotels less known hotels um, and promoted destinations, uh, less known destinations, improve the economy there or help in doing so. But on the other side, on the other hand, it, this has uh, led to certain other destinations uh, have a problem with maybe over tourism or may have this. Um, now, I know Agora has uh, definitely been actively more uh, involved in, in um, mitigating this. Many OTAs have also in the recent years worked on this. Um, another example of, of initiatives that uh, we did at Agoda was one uh, called Echo Deals, uh, which with we partnered with the Worldwide uh, Fund for Nature in Singapore um, to enable travelers um, basically to have more impact or to let those travelers who are looking to have a more positive impact in their uh, travel purchases um, be able to choose destinations or hotels that actually have uh, um, these initiatives, uh, whether it's environmental initiatives or give back to the, giving back to the community, um, wherever they travel to, uh, and of course throughout uh, Southeast Asia. Wow, that's so interesting because I think now uh, humans were being more social and environmentally conscious, so hmm. which I mean being able to to kind of maintain this profile and these values why you travel is so interesting yes <laughs> yes so thank you very much lucas for giving us an thank overview you. of the travel sector also the, the ambition the how do you envision the future and i mean giving us all the information about how <laughs> OTAs. i'm sure now we, we will have all the information that we need thank you so much for being thank here thank you for having me